Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know my voice sounds crazy. However, if I don't get this video done, you guys will be without a video for two weeks, so please forgive me. I just flew back in from Argentina yesterday, and I'm trying to get my voice back. Let me tell you something, Argentina, Rosario, Argentina, owes me absolutely nothing. They know how to show a girl a good time, okay? Thank you so much, Rosario, Argentina. I love you. I cannot wait to get back to you guys. So anyway, the video this um, week, guys, we're going to go over mixed topics, just mixed topics that you have to know for NCLEX, for HESI, for ATI, nursing exit review, if you have a final and it's mixed, these are topics that most likely may be covered, important things that you need to know, okay? Before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video, subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I'm now offering Next Generation NCLEX reviews. You can book a private tutoring session as well. And I also have audio lessons. You can check all of that out by going to my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Now, before we get started, I'd like to uh, say a quick prayer. If you're not into that, that's fine. Just go ahead and fast forward. And if you are, please close your eyes, bow your head, unless you're operating heavy machinery. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all your grace and mercy. Thank you, Father God, for the safe trip and allowing me to get back home safely, Father God. Thank you for all the people that I was able to meet and all the connections I was able to make, Father God. Lord, I pray for every single person that I met, Lord, especially the children, Old Newell's Boys Club and also Central for these children who want to be professionals, Father God. Lord, I ask that you please bless them. And Lord, I pray that you please give them opportunities. Let doors open up in their lives, Father God, so that they can reach their goals. Lord, I pray for every single viewer right now that's watching this video or maybe they're listening. Lord, they've come in, they've come for their own special purpose, for Father God. Maybe they're still a student in the program and they're struggling or they've graduated, but they just can't pass their test. For whatever reason, they've come to this channel. Lord, I ask that you please bless them. Help them to understand the information. Help them to recognize the topics that they're not too strong in and give them the discipline to go back and read about these topics and, and learn and practice questions, Father God. Please help them to understand the rationale so that when they see these same questions or same topics, same concepts and principles, when they see it again, Lord, they can think through these answers, think critically and answer these questions appropriately. Father God, I ask that you please bless every single student, help them to get that license and help them to use that license for good. Help them to use that license to be a blessing to someone else. Lord, thank you for this position that you've put me in that I can reach so many people. And Lord, I ask that you please help me to teach this information in a way that they can understand, that they can regurgitate when they see it again, Father God. Thank you for all you've done and all you continue to do in our lives. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, let's get started. First question. A client requires insertion of a nasogastric tube. When preparing the client for the procedure, the nurse should place the client in which of the following positions? One, high fowler's position with the head tilted forward. Two, high fowler's position with the head tilted backwards. Three, semi fowler's position with the head in a neutral position. Or four, semi fowler's position with the head tilted backwards. And guys, the correct answer is one, high fowler's position with the head tilted forward. And the reason um, this is the best position is because it helps to close that trachea, but also keep the esophagus open. So that's the best position. The other choices are incorrect. A client returns to his room after a liver biopsy. The nurse should place the client in which of the following positions? One, side lying with a folded towel under the biopsy site. Two, right side lying with a folded towel under the biopsy site, three, supine with pressure dressing over the biopsy site, or four, prone with a small pillow under the biopsy site. And guys, the correct answer is two. Right side lying, just think about where the liver is located, right? On the right side and something else you have to remember, the liver is a very, 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 very bloody organ. Think about where your clotting factors are made. So yes, you're going to place the pressure right side, we're on number two, with a folded towel under the biopsy site. And again, that's going to apply pressure. It's going to help prevent bleeding. And you want to apply that pressure, keep that pressure on that site for at least three hours because again, uh, the liver is a very bloody organ. 
By the way, guys, this is going to be a very short video just because my voice, I know I sound crazy, but I just feel so bad if I don't make this video, like seriously, this evening's my deadline. If I don't get this video to my editor by this evening, you guys will be without a video for two weeks. So it's going to be a short video, but I promise I'll make it up in the future. Okay. All right. Next question. Following insertion of an NG tube, the nurse aspirates the gastric contents to check the pH to determine if the NG tube is correctly placed. Which of the following pH values is consistent with gastric secretions? One, nine, two, eight, three, six, or four, four. And guys, the correct answer is four. Four. The gastric contents should be acidic. Think about it. You have hydrochloric acid in your stomach. It's the hydrochloric acid in your stomach that breaks down the food so you expect the gastric contents to be very acidic the lower the number the more acidic that the gastric contents are so um gastric contents you expect it to be about 5.5 or less nothing higher than that so four is the correct answer choice a client with a tracheostomy is exhibiting difficulty breathing and respirations are increasingly noisy secretions are very thick which of the following initial interventions is most indicated? One, increase humidification and suction the tracheostomy tube. Two, notify the physician. Three, sit the client upright and encourage the client to breathe deeply and cough. Four, gently irrigate and suction the tracheostomy tube. All right, guys, the first thing you're going to do is number one, you're going to increase humidification and suction the tracheostomy. So let's talk about this because it says increase humidification. Then you see a comma and suction tracheostomy. And I always tell you, be very careful when you see an answer choice, you see an answer comma and then the an answer. Make sure the whole thing's correct because if whatever's in front of the comma or behind the comma, if one of them's incorrect, the whole thing's wrong. Number one, the whole thing is correct. You're going to increase humidification. Why are we increasing humidification? We want to loosen up those mucus plugs, okay? So you want to increase the humidification and then suction tracheostomy tube. You want to break up the thick secretion so it can be suctioned out. That is the first thing you're going to do. Now let's look at the other choices. And the other choices are correct, but I'm going to tell you in what order. So after you do number one, you're going to do number three, which is sit the client upright, encourage the client to breathe deeply and cough. Usually when a patient's having trouble breathing, the first thing you do is set them, set them up to have them breathe. The reason that that's not number one is because they have that tracheostomy tube. We need air going through that, right? So we have to liquid, um, that's not a word, liquidize, liquidize, no, liquidate. Okay, I know what I'm trying to say, it's just not coming out liquefy yes you want to liquefy the secretions those secretions those thick mucus plugs you want to make it nice and thin so it's easy to suction out you want to suction so that there's an airway remember airway breathing circulation you have to create an airway first so the patient can breathe that's why number one's the answer first and then we do number three which is sit them up and encourage the client to breathe deeply and cough We've already suctioned out those thick mucus plugs, right? So after number three, um, three, we're gonna have the patient do, we're gonna do four, gently irrigate, suction tracheostomy tube. Last, last, notify the healthcare provider. Usually when you have a list of steps of things you do for a patient, guess what? Last is gonna be to notify the healthcare provider because there's so many different nursing interventions you're gonna do for your patient before you call your healthcare provider. Because when you call the healthcare provider, you not only have to tell the healthcare provider what your patient looks like, your assessment, the vital signs, you gotta tell them what you actually did for your patient and what your patient looked like afterwards, right? So there's a lot of steps before you call the healthcare provider. So usually calling the healthcare provider is either last or second to last. <coughs> Excuse me. Next question. A client has a chest tube in place with a three chamber chest drainage system. The nurse notes continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber. This indicates which of the following? One, pneumothorax. Two, suction is adequate. Three, system air leak. Or four, the tube is positioned incorrectly. 
And guys, number three is the correct answer. System air leak. What was the clue to let us know that most likely what's happening is a system air leak and not anything else? When you go back to the question, continuous bubbling. Continuous bubbling, not fluctuations, continuous bubbling in that water seal chamber, you better be thinking of an air leak. Now look at, let's look at the wrong answer choices. One, pneumothorax. With a pneumothorax, you'll see intermittent bubbling. Two, suction is adequate suction adequate we'd be seeing fluctuations we'd be seeing tidling right and then number four the tube is positioned incorrectly well that could be from lots of things there could be maybe no movement uh maybe the lungs have it um maybe the lungs have re re I can't speak. Maybe the lungs have re-expanded. It could be, you know, lots of things that cause that. But could specifically, when you see the continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber, you should be thinking of an air leak. An elderly client with moderate Alzheimer's disease lives with her daughter and appears dirty and disheveled and has lost five pounds over the previous month. Which of the following does a nurse suspect? One, physical abuse. Two, caregiver neglect. Three, self-neglect, or four, psychological abuse. And guys, the correct answer is to caregiver neglect. Go back to the question. They tell you that this patient has moderate Alzheimer's, right? That's our first clue. So the, we're dealing with a cognitive cognitive uh, deficiency, right? That's one. They live with their daughter. They're dirty. They're disheveled and they're losing weight. This person with moderate Alzheimer's, uh, they can't care for themselves, so they're gonna be dependent. They're gonna be reliant on a caregiver. Their caregiver is supposed to keep that patient fed and clean, but that's not what we're seeing in this situation. We're gonna suspect caregiver neglect. One, physical abuse. There's nothing showing, you know, um, multiple injuries in various states like um, of healing, like broken bones, several broken bones that are healed over time. For self-neglect, they can't care for themselves. It says that the patient has moderate Alzheimer's. They're going to be dependent on someone else to care for them. And then choice four, psychological abuse. There's no evidence. There's nothing here that's telling us that there is psychological abuse happening with this patient. Again, the patient is disheveled, they're dirty, and they're losing weight, which means they're most likely malnourished. They're not eating properly. We're suspecting caregiver neglect. Next question. The nurse is reviewing medications with a client who's to be scheduled for outpatient rotator cuff repair. Which of the following medications does the nurse anticipate the client will be advised to avoid on the morning of surgery? One, metoprolol, two, level thyroxine, three, aspirin, or, or four, fluoxetine. And the correct answer is three, aspirin, and you know, medications such as aspirin, and says anything that can increase the risk of bleeding, that's gonna be withheld because after a patient has surgery, any type of surgery, as long as it's invasive, we're gonna be concerned about three things. Infection, formation of DVT, or God forbid that clot goes to the pulmonary artery and causes a pulmonary embolism. And third is what? Hemorrhage right? So we don't want anything that could increase the risk of bleeding. So any NSAIDs or aspirin are going to be withheld. So uh, three is the correct answer choice. Last question. The nurse is caring for an unvaccinated child who developed complications related to German measles rubella. Which of the following infection control protocols is appropriate? One, standard only. Two, standard in contact. Three, standard in droplet. Four, standard and airborne. And guys, the correct answer choice is three, um, standard and droplet. So let's go over the wrong answer choices first. First one, one standard only. Standard applies to everyone, but just because that word only should have told you that's not the answer. Stay away from answer choices with all inclusive, such as only, never, always, none. Stay away from them. Do not choose that as your answer unless you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that's the answer choice. And guess what? That's usually not the answer. Okay? We're getting rid of that. 
Choice two, standard and contact. So remember, standard, that applies for everyone. Let's talk about contact. Contact, you're going to wear gown, gloves for all contact with the patient. Patient's going to be in a private room. And if there has to be someone else in the room with them, that patient has, the other person has to be at least three feet away. And we want to keep the patients with infectious process in a room if they have to be room with someone else with the same type of infectious process, okay? And last, standard and airborne. With the airborne, you know, um, patient, uh, you're going to have to wear N95 going into that patient's room. If the patient has to leave the room for whatever reason, they're going to wear a surgical mask. Now, for the correct answer, which is standard and droplet, when it comes to droplet, remember, those are the particles that are um, big. They're big. They're larger than five, I can't pronounce it, microns? I always say MM, but that's incorrect. I think it's called microns. Anyway, um, airborne is smaller than five. I'm going to say microns, but I might be wrong, but five. Airborne is smaller than five, and that's why it can stay floating in the air for hours and hours. But droplet are very large. It's larger than five, and that um, means it can't travel very far, but it can travel up to three feet, right? So with um, droplet precautions, by the way, uh, German measles, rubella, patients going to be on droplet precautions, wear a mask. A uh, patient's going to be in private room. And of course, again, if they have to be in a room with someone else, that someone else has to be at least three feet away from that person. So for German measles rubella, patient's going to be droplet precautions and of course, standard. Standard we use for everyone. And guys, I'm sorry. I know this is a short video, but I'm going to make it up. I'm either going to make it up in one video or several videos where they're just a little bit longer. So please, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't be too hard on me in the comments because... I just got back, guys. This was like a nine-hour flight. I just got back yesterday, and I'm not feeling my best, but I wanted to make sure I made a video for you, so please be kind in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see me uh, cover next. This uh, series, I think I'm going to keep it going because I really... I don't have enough questions. I, I really need to cover more. But let me know what you'd like to see me cover in the comments. And also, let me know how you'd like to see me cover information. Do you like it in this question-answer format? Do you like when I teach as a lecture out of a book or do you like when I do an activity such as a Kahoot format? Please let me know in the sound off in the comment section. Please don't forget to check out my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com and look at all of um, the things I have available, such as audio lessons, the one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions, the NCLEX review sessions. I got lots of stuff on the website. Be sure to check that out. Thank you so much for watching this video. You guys will catch me on the next video.